What's going on guys? The one I'm about to show you here is a inverter board or inverter kit replacement on a Carrier Infinity heat pump. It, this is the 18V. Uh, another technician went out, uh, diagnosed the bad inverter with the help of Carrier Tech Support and I'm just going back to put it on. So he was getting a communication error at the Carrier user interface and that's the conclusion they came up with. It was a bad inverter board. So uh, I went back with the parts and here's that video. Thanks for watching. All right, we have a Carrier Infinity. We're gonna pull this inverter board off and replace it. Okay, what they've given us actually is a whole inverter kit. So this has got a couple boards on it. So basically they gave me this whole thing here. So that's pretty cool. All right, let's get going. I'll tell you right now, this new one looks a lot different than the, the old one. This old one's got a board up here. But this new one does not have. Alright, so so I'm guessing this older this is the older one, even though it's only two years old. And this is I just checked on carrier service tech. This is the most recent part number that one right there so even though it looks completely different it's looking like a lot of my plugs are matching up like this this here so we're gonna give her a go all right I think for the most part I got everything unwired got this unwired all my plugs unwired and then all this from the top. So now it's just a bunch of screws. And the, the old one will come right out. All right, we got it out. You can take a look. Looks like a lot more electronics in the old one. A lot more. We're gonna need our model plug. Definitely gonna need that. You just take that out, your model plug and you just stick it right on the new one. And you can see this. You know, just a couple boards in this one where this one has like a bunch of boards tied together. This one only has the one board. And this one has this coil up here also. Looks like this board's the same. All right, let's get it set in place and hook back up. Before we do that, let's just let's just look, make sure nothing's out of the out of the ordinary. Since we have this big hole right here right now, good access hole. And one thing with these carriers, man, they pack everything in here. These infinities. There is not a whole lot of space, that's for sure. All right, new one is mounted. Now I can tell the com the fan has its own little plug it plugs into. Just like that. And the compressor plugs actually plug in to their own spot too. They don't actually plug into the board anymore. So we'll get all those hooked up now. Right, we got all this connected. We got our high voltage connected down here. Now it's just a matter of matching our plugs back up. All right, we got all our plugs hooked back up. And one thing you want to remember to do after you get everything in, take either a meter lead or a small screwdriver and just go around all your pins here and just push them in. 
sometimes they come out and it's good practice to push them in see i can feel every single well just about every one of them are pushing in a little bit and that can cause problems later so just make sure you push them all in all right guys we got everything landed everything on here everything pushed in we went ahead and put a surge protector on too um, for whatever reason one was not installed with this unit and it should have been so went ahead and put one of those on there all right um i have the power off we're going to go ahead and reset power and then we will go ahead and start it up and uh the system will have to go through its uh, self-check and uh self-installation because it's got a new board in it then we'll fire it up all right we're going to go through the self-installation on the carrier user interface here uh fancy name for carrier's thermostat and it's basically just going to go through and find all of its components it's going to find the indoor unit the outdoor unit on some of them it'll find the heater pack and any zoning that it might have which this system does not have zoning so it's not going to find any of that so we're going to skip past that part uh, i actually mess up here i put air filter but it does have an electronic air cleaner uh, we don't have any humidity we don't have ultraviolet i do go back and fix that though yeah, they're showing us all of our components there uh, and then we're going to go through the airflow verification test see i look up here now and i see that it's got the carrier capture and kill filter there so i do go back later and change that in the uh, user interface but very nice clean installation uh, looks pretty good all right, while it's going through its airflow verification test, I just wanted to take a look at the board out here to see if there was LED lights on, and there is. So, apparently before, he had no LED indicator lights on anything. So I see one up here that's on. And we got LEDs down here that are on also. So that's good. We'll let it finish, finish its airflow verification test and then we can put it through a test mode. Our, I don't know if you can see that. Yep, it, that light is green right now, which means we are protected. If that light ever goes out, that means we are not protected. I don't know why that keeps on, it's like the camera's not picking it up. I can see it clearly out of the camera, but it's like gotta be just right for the camera to pick it up. That's weird. All right, we're actually gonna package this old board back up and carrier is going to want that back because this is warranty and that board is very expensive i didn't um look at the ticket when they put it picked it up but this board i think is around it's at least two thousand dollars so very expensive All right, we are running. Our unit is in a, um, a test cooling mode right now. And she seems like she's running pretty good. So we're gonna go in, we'll, we'll check at the thermostat, which Carrier calls a user interface. And we will uh, check to see what the readings are. And just for shoots and giggles, we're going to switch it over to heat mode and put it in a test operation there also to make sure it runs in heat mode correctly all right we're just starting back up in heating mode now just to make sure that runs good um, this one does not have the bluetooth module uh, this is only the 18 vs um, and plus it's a 21 i think they did have the bluetooth module in 21 but um, i believe that might have only came on the green speed the, the 25 uh, but it doesn't have it. It's a cool feature to have though. You can Bluetooth right into the unit and see what it's doing. Make a, make adjustments to it as long as the, the homeowner allows you access to it. Uh, you can make adjustments, but everything else you can see what it's doing. But hey, this, this one doesn't have it, but um, still a nice, a nice unit, 18 sear.
It's running in heating mode right now, and I think we're just about done here. All right, guys, I'm heading home from day two at the hotel there, but I didn't get any footage of that today. Uh, I figured I'd do an outro of the carrier video here. Uh, pretty, pretty decent repair right there. You know, pretty straightforward. Uh, the old inverter kit comes out. The new inverter kit goes in. Uh, you go through the, the full self-installation on the carrier um, user interface and, and you're done. So it's pretty, pretty straightforward there. And uh, I'll be back at the hotel for the final day tomorrow to finish up all those PMs. Uh, I'm not really getting a whole lot because it's pretty repetitive. I mean, it's just checking capacitors and, um, you know, cleaning coils and stuff over and over again and all that gets pretty boring. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to film any of that. If I run into something interesting or repair out there, I'll go ahead and post it. But um, if it's just PMing, I'm not going to post a whole lot of that. I know you guys don't want to really see any of that. So. All right, guys, that is going to be it for this one, though. So if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing to the channel. It really helps me out. It gets me up there with all the more popular HVAC channels like uh, HVAC Guy and uh, Mikey Pipes and Steve Lab and those type of guys. Um, it recommends my videos after theirs if my channel has more subscribers and more traffic and more watch time. So it really helps me out just, just subscribing or liking the video or, um, or leaving a comment or something like that. So um, I know I ask it all the time, please like and subscribe. And uh, that's sometimes you forget to like the video. A lot of videos I watch, uh, the, um, the YouTuber will say, don't forget to like it. And I'll realize I haven't liked the video yet and I'll hit like. So it really does work asking people to like your videos. So I'm sorry if I say it all the time, but um, you know, some people actually do forget and sometimes just asking for it will uh, have them like the video. So. All right guys, but I'm headed home now. I'm stuck in traffic as usual, uh, coming back from Rehoboth. But all right guys, I hope you guys have a good night and I'm gonna get a good night's rest and go back to the hotel tomorrow to finish up those PMs. All right, guys, thanks for watching.